Um, and where is this? This is at vision.transitfuture.org. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about the campaign that we built around this. So this is that we, you know, uh, it wasn't just a matter of taking these, the, the transit projects, the expansion projects that have been sitting on a shelf for a while and, and put them on a map. That's important. Um, we're actually trying to get this done and trying to get these built. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Los Angeles. Uh, so if anybody's ever been to LA, it's going to seem a little bit strange that people in Chicago and Cook County would be talking about looking to Los Angeles for inspiration on public transit. <laughs> right? Yeah. But uh, in 2008, um, some folks in LA got together. An organization called Move LA was a big driver behind this. And uh, Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, who was mayor there at the time, uh, they put together a campaign to like double the size of their transit system and invest in their transportation system more generally uh, to the tune of about $40 billion. And they did it by raising a half penny sales tax and dedicating it to all this new construction, about 50% of the operation as well. So now, LA, in 1990, they had like nothing. And they have the money and they have the expertise to build this. So they're changing fundamentally the way they're the way LA County works and the way people get around. So, so think about this: a half penny on the dollar, which for most people, if you buy some stuff, it's like four bucks a month. A single latte, right, gets you ten new heavy rail lines. That isn't just a pretty map. It, it actually like it's going to transform the face of LA because it, it makes it possible to densify this whole region. So it's like literally regional transformation on the scale that we haven't seen since the thing was built to begin with, half penny on the dollar. And the way you do it is you skim off of your economy. Like, you know, have you ever heard of this idea of, uh, of taxes and how they can be invested in useful stuff? Right? Kind of unpopular idea. Despite the fact that we hate the taxes, they still do that. And every other country in the world does it at the national level. Our politicians can't get their heads out their asses to do the same thing. So we have to do it locally. That's basically, it's, it's, a, it's a policy hack. You say, we want to transform a region. Let's tap into our region. And they got the voters on board. Right. I'm not sure I would put it entirely that way, but I think you're right. <laughs> uh, so in LA County and in California, they have binding referenda, which means that uh, if you want to uh, raise a tax and dedicate it to something, or just raise a tax generally, you have to go to the voters. And you have to get two thirds of the voters in whatever district you're talking about to support it. That's what they did. They went to the voters and they said, "Okay, we want to build this. We're going to have to pay for it, but it's worth it." And 68% of county voters agreed. So they passed this. Now think about it for a second. Los Angeles, right? Like Gridlock City, the city that made the car famous. The people voted to raise the sales tax on themselves for a far off vision. Why? Because it wasn't that far off. They're going to be building this in about 10, 15 years. Right. Well, how is that possible? So it's possible uh, through a number of, it's, it's federal policy, which um, is kind of boring unless you're like a big transit policy nerd. So for example. So um, every several years, the federal government passes a transportation appropriation bill. And in it, they create certain policies. Um, one of the policies that they created was an expansion of existing program that, um, or expanding of several existing programs that allows for uh, federal grants and uh, low interest federal loans for large scale transportation projects, particularly based on transit, right? Uh, in the president's budget, which he's proposed, uh, there's something called America Fast Forward Bonds, which the mayor of Los Angeles has, has so basically, these bonds are such that um, if you have a revenue stream, so you can say that like um, we have a half penny from everybody coming in every year. It brings in $500 million. Give us that money up front over 35 years or 40 years. And we can start construction now. And you're guaranteed to be paid back because we're hoping that Los Angeles doesn't like sink into the ocean or something. So this is costing $40 billion. You borrow the money from the feds up front, and then you pay it back slowly as the tax money comes in. Precisely. You can also use it to match federal grants and state grants. 
Um, so that's that's the piece of it. So we're not talking about like uh, they're not they didn't raise forty billion dollars from just the people. They brought in uh, funds from the state. They brought in funds from the federal government and from local governments, and they put it all together in their buildings, right? So. Can you talk a little bit about the deliverables in this plan? Like, if I fly to LA right now, what do I see? If I fly to LA in 10 years, what do I see? If I fly to LA in 30 years, what do I see? It says 3010. Right. That, what does that mean? So 3010 is the plan to take these projects, which would have taken 30 years if they built it just sort of incrementally, sort of taking their revenue and building it up, and then buying a project, taking the revenue, building it up, buying a project. Instead of doing that, which would have taken 30 years, they can do it at 10 with these sort of new federal bonding structures, right? Um, it's sort of like a mortgage. Okay. Uh, you, you have your paycheck, and the bank says, OK, with this paycheck, you can prove that you're going to be able to pay $500,000 over 30 years, right? It's actually exactly what this map shows. So it's, it's telling you for each of the new lines that they're proposing when they would have gotten, like, What's this we measure on 3010? This gets complicated. This gives you a sense of when stuff is supposed to come online. So most of it is going to be a little bit of 2013, a little bit of 2015, and most of it is like at the end of the, of the decade, which makes sense because it's big stuff. But it's it's all coming online in the next, it looks like in the next six, seven years. And what does it consist of? Does it consist of rail? Does it consist yeah. of bus lines? Does it yeah. So all the, all the above, basically. So uh, there's a, there's the subway to the sea down Wilshire, I think. I don't know, I don't really know how to very well. Um, there's light rail. They also have road projects. They have, uh, I think, some bus lines. I think some commuter rail. And they have, like, a local government match sort of program where, like, local governments get about, I think it's a 5% of the total revenue for, uh, like, complete streets pothole filling or transit projects in their, in their particular municipalities. Is this all one integrated system? Are you, do you mean like, is this like the CT or something like that? I mean, yeah, like, uh, you know, there's the Santa Monica bus now, and then there's LA's public transportation. I have no idea. Okay. Yes. 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 So, you know, cool is, yeah, so are they, are they merging all these different agencies, or how does it work? No, I mean, this would all be, uh, Operated by uh, Los Angeles MTA. Oh right, duh. Yeah. So Metro is the is the is the organization. It's it's like sort of like their RTA ish. Um, that sort of levies the fee and prioritizes the projects and works with stakeholders to let them build on and run. But we all know that LA is going to be crushed by a giant monster from the sea soon. So let's not focus on LA very much. Let's go back to our thing. That's the problem is with us, we have RTA. We don't have the same kind of structure that they have with the uh, over Los Angeles where you get things done a lot quicker. Right. And I have to deal with a lot of BS middlemen that we're dealing with here. So what we do have is Cook County. Uh, the Cook, so we don't have binding referenda, right? So we can't put it to a vote to the public. We don't have the laws that allow that. So we have to go to a legislative body. So that means the state, um, the county, the city, any municipality, um, and you have to go to them and have them vote on it, right? So we looked at campaigns that were similar to this around the country, and we found that when you have like the central city and the county around it, surrounding it, uh, you you win. You, you get this new transit system. When you try and do it regionally, in Atlanta, they try to do it with Atlanta and like the 13 surrounding counties, um, and it failed. They had a vote, and uh, Atlanta's county won Fulton County, I think it is. And then one other county supported it, and then the other one said no. Uh, and it's a matter of their development patterns. Though. But so um, we looked at Chicago land, and we thought, and we saw Cook County, the Cook County Board of Commissioners. They have the ability, they have the legal right to raise certain taxes and fees, and they've begun to focus more. So traditionally, the county is focused on health and uh, corrections. So Cook County Jail, uh, Cook County Hospital, that's the majority of what they do. But they also do transportation. And uh, under the leadership of Tony Pleckenfold, they're focusing more on economic development. That. Uh, and so uh, we came up with this idea. 
and uh, we went and talked to Tony Krakow, the president of the county board. And this was about, I don't know, two years ago or so. And she said, this is very interesting. OK, uh, why don't you talk to all the commissioners? So we did. We talked to all the commissioners. And uh, nine of them signed on to say that, OK, this is a good idea. We like it. Um, 